In this video, I will show you how to put together this push pin box, which is a 3D SVG file from Simply Crafty SVGs. So here's the finished box. So you can see that I made it big enough to fit a gift card in it. So there's the little, looks like a fun little push pin. And then I made the top. So basically it can't sit obviously like that, like that. It's going to either sit like that or on its side as a gift. That's kind of what I intended. So you see them on the table when you take them out. Um, but you can have a gift card that fits just perfectly in there. So there you go. And have kind of upside down. So there you go. And then you can put some goodies in there. And this slides right on like that. So let's get to it. So let's do the um, pin part first, and the reason is is that it uh, takes the most, it's just smallest, so it might be one of the hardest, in my opinion. So we'll go ahead and fold it. So there's little scores, and I would recommend uh, that you score it with either, if you're using like a score tool on a Cricut, that you might want to use a bone folder to really get the edges crisp. I find it works well to do this. But I did not score with the Cricut score tool. So if you cut them with dash lines, it'll score, it'll fold like what I'm doing it. So I'm taking each section and folding it. So once you get to this point, these are going to fold down. So you can always just pre fold them, but you don't want them to be down yet. But fold them down just to get them folded. And then these little tabs down. So originally I wanted to make this the size of, to use with the skewers to make it easy for people, but it's super small. So if you do like make it like half the size, I think it's not quite half the size, um, but smaller, you could use a skewer to glue in there. But I made this a hexagon so it'd be easier to consistently make versus a circular item. So this one, so you have to look carefully, but their scores, so depending on how you scored it, using the dashed cut lines or score tool, it's going to fold better with dashed score lines or like I did, which I'm using a silhouette to do solid cutting. It's called like a kiss cut to, to score them. So that works well for me. And this is the tab, so you see there's no tab off of it, so we're going to glue it like this. So I'm using art glitter glue today, with, uh, not art glitter glue, barely art. Uh, I usually use art glitter glue, but um, I like them both. I just happen to be using this lately. They're very similar. They have slight differences uh, in dry time, but not too much. So I'm just going to line that edge up. So I just glued that tab underneath. You can see that. So the tab is glued underneath and these edges line up. So you can see like this. So we go ahead and I'm going to fold these in, which I could have done that before, but, and then we're going to, you don't want to push them too far in because you want it to be able to grab something. So I'm just going to add glue to these tabs. You can also add it to the edge of that, but I feel like I get better, uh, more accurate glue coverage when I glue them on the tabs. Then fold it over. And the reason I'm doing this in two pieces because it would be somewhat difficult to do in one piece. So with the point. So you just want to get it around, make sure that the edges line up on that bottom panel and then you can go like this. So again doing using this on um, will give it a little bit better of an edge if you're having some problems folding it, especially if you're using some of the Cricut store score tools like the score wheel or school tr regular score tool. So I just pre-folded those, but I'm pulling, pulling them flat for now. 
I just want them pre-folded. Pre I'm just going to fold it over just a little bit like that. And the reason why is just going to be make, make it easier to glue it. So I'm going to glue this tab, which has a little rounded tab. And I did that so there was no um, confusion what the tab was. Then you're just going to fold it flat over. And it should line up. So it's a, a smidgen off, but not enough to make a difference. And then we can go ahead and fold these in and glue it over like that on both sides. So let me finish that and then we'll put the two pieces together. And you can see we can just go ahead and try not to squish this because, I mean, you could put something in there as a support, but I really didn't. So you just want to hold it lightly, and probably towards the bottom. Make sure you don't squeeze it, else it'll come loose. But you can always hold it like that for a little bit, too. We're going to take the side that's um, not as appealing, and we're going to put it into the actual box. We'll take the side that the best side and attach this top piece. So now that I have both sides glued together, I'm going to find out which side I like best and glue this piece to it because this is the visible side. So one thing I want to do too is to ink this edge a little bit. So I tend to take just a piece of scrap and I'm using one of these iCrafter finger uh, brushes. I like them. I've gotten used to using them, so it takes a little bit getting used to. But I'm just getting them on the corner here, inking this edge. And then I could ink the sides a little bit. It's If you need something a little bit more precise, you might want to use a makeup brush or something like that. And if you wanted it more metallic-y, you could just um, add a little bit of, of glue if you want to do metallics. I like a metallic glue. So I really don't need to do the bottom that much. But I didn't really want it. I'm not going to just deal with metallics right now. Oh, and I'm also going to ink this. So I'm just getting, even though this is solid core, I just want it to be a little darker because once I put it together, I know there's a seam there, but kind of have to have it um, the way that I built it. I tried a couple different ways, and I just didn't like. I just don't want to make it hard to put together. And I still get it gets the effect enough. So I just want to line up those edges. It's just a hexagon shape. So I'm just getting my fingers. Just get them lined up best you can. You might want to keep the seam with the seam, which I didn't do, so let's go ahead and rotate that here. So the seam on this with the seam on that. They are the same size, contrary to what you've probably seen, but it's just because of the gap. So if you wanted to find a big dowel this size, and I think this is something like uh, 0.5 at the, the widest, you could do that. And if you want it more realistic, of course, you'd have to chisel a point. So I didn't want to, I didn't particularly want to teach that because we're not chiselers. We work with paper. So I'm going to put that aside, and I did that up first so it could dry, actually. So that I only use this for the ink to get the excess ink off my little sponge. So now we have the pieces. So you'll notice mine has an L, but you'll it'll cut an L if you cut it, or depending on how you set it up, there's an L that will be on one of them, and then um, a B on the other one. So L is for lid, B is for the bottom. So the bottom, this is 
obviously the lid, and this is the bottom piece. So the lid piece, this is going to be smaller than this one. And so when you cut them out, you're going to get this, this, and this for the, uh, the lid. And then um, you'll have these pe pieces for the bottom piece. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put the lid pieces aside. So this, this, and this. And again, there should be an L or a T. So just make sure you, a B, um, just make sure you use the right one. I originally put T for top, but I was calling it lid. So it's little things in life. So we're going to take this piece and put it together first. So this is going to be, these four will go together. And then these two will go together. So I'll show you why I did what I did in a minute, but you really want to fold these on the scores first. before you glue it together. So this one, this is a slight bend. So the way I'm going to put it together is I'm going to, after I have it all folded, I'm going to take that these two tabs. You can start wherever you want it to. Add glue up, up to, but not too close to that fold. I always have a wet paper towel too if I put too much glue so I can clean it off. So it's a little damp paper towel. So what, what I found is the easiest after putting several together was to do this first. So fold, get the, the top one lined up, and make sure you don't get that bottom one stuck before you adjust it, and then just the bottom one just a little bit. So it's a real slight bend, but it's enough to make it, to me, make the it the way that I wanted it to. So it's pretty simple. Just make sure you get it secure in place and dry before you start pulling on the next one. Because what I used to do in the early days is I'd go too fast and I'd go to the next one here and I'm just lining it up. And I can tell with my fingertip this edge is lined up with the fold. But I used to do it too quickly then I'd pull the, this. when I go to this one I pulled that one off. So I'm going to do another one just to, to uh, another tip. Because it's going to be similar for the lid. Another tip is if you don't want this sticking before it needs to, this one, just push it in a little bit. So just push it back. When we do the top one, it won't touch. So I'm just kind of pulling it up, making sure it lines up. And then reaching in and pushing in the next one, this one right here, and then like make sure it's lined up. And you can hold both of them at the same time. You can always do minor adjustments too. It's pretty forgiving. I've done a couple um, versions of it, and it was if I made like kind of a slight mistake, like gluing too far, it it still went together which is nice. You just don't want to go over that fold. That's the thing that will get you into trouble more so because then, then that inner, the, the piece, the side piece that's going to be the side of the middle of the box, it won't fit in correctly. So that's the biggest thing. So when it comes to this last one, fold in these last tabs right here. Fold them in just so when we glue this, they're on the inside. And the lid will be the same exact way. So um, I'll probably show a sped up version of that assembly just because it's similar. Um, it just has a different angle on the on this fold here. And then to close it up, you can just reach in and some glue. So if you have an issue like that, it's coming apart right there. It's because I, I went too fast. So I'll go back to that. So just want to make sure you get 
You'll feel the pressure as you get that last one glued. So and then folding this in. So uh, normally if I were crafting it, I'm a really slow crafter. So if this is too fast, obviously you can um, you can pause it, but um, if this is too slow, of course you can forward through it. So I always want the person that's doing it for one of the first times and they're not experienced to get, understand how to do it and not get so frustrated. Of course, we're always here to help, so you can always contact us. So this piece now, again, make sure it says, um, we're doing the bottom, so make sure it says B on it. And B will be right here. It should be cut out if you didn't do anything to it. It should be just a little cut. And I wrote it on there because I, I put the um, letters on it after I cut this out. So and we're going to take this tab and you can put it flat and add glue to it. I would have recommended pre-folding it, which I did. It doesn't look like it. So you can see where this edge lines up. So we're just going to fold it over. It should line right into place. I'm just double checking and it's, it is. So that makes it much easier because you can use the table um, to apply some force. Make sure it's glued so that tab is glued on the inside. So these we want to train backwards a little bit. So train, go, fold inwards, which is this is a mountain fold and then a valley fold like that. Just because it's going to go back a little bit to glue on. You could have done that earlier. I just didn't do that. I'll do that on the next piece. Fold back and then the reason why it's easier to do it before is that you won't experience that where it's glued, this tab. When you fold back it will pull a little force on it and we'll fold it in and you can go this way if you want there's no there's no one way you could have started from the top but we're just going to glue one of them in so we're going to glue on this right underneath here so we'll start on that one so i matched up the seams too if that's but it's up to you what you want to make do. Like that wasn't a very good seam right there, so maybe I'd rotate and make that the back. So they're not all going to be perfect or anything. We're not machines. So we're going to add um, glue to this tab. So I'm just going to glue one. So I'm just pulling it up a little bit. But then checking to make sure that this inside fold is lined up with this edge. So the fold right down here of the tab should line up with uh, the edge of this. So you'll see on the bottom right there. And then what I like to do is do the one across from it. So you can see I'm just putting a lot of pressure on it. I'll do the one right across from it. And so what it does is centers it for me. It works quite well because if I I used to do go around and sometimes it would be offset a little bit this way it kind of puts it in place for you. So it's always a good thing with hexagons or polygonal like octagons, decagons, hexagons. It kind of helps center it. You can do it with squares too, just across from each other, obviously. So it's just my habit. And then we'll go ahead and add glue to the other tabs to glue them to the bottom. Now that we have them all glued on, it looks like this and it has a hole in the bottom. And the reason there's a hole in the bottom is so we could do that easily. Um, I'm going to do this bottom piece, which that's where the uh, pin will insert. There's a little octagonal opening there. So let's do this next, and then we'll put this piece and this piece together. So the way to fold this is I already folded one. Just take it. This is the um, textured side because I'm using American Crafts textured cardstock. 
I'm going to flip it over and just kind of fold against the table like that. Flip it over, fold these up, and if, if you need to, use your, um, your bone folder or similar tool to fold. And then fold like that. So it's still, you know, six-sided. So we're going to go ahead and add glue to this tab, little tab. And we're going to line this edge up, up to the fold, the tab fold. So we're going to line it up best we can. Once I kind of get it down, I'm going to flip it over, see how lined up it is on the other side. Make sure it's centered. So be careful not to move it around when you look on the other side. I just moved it around slightly. I mean, if you need to. The only reason what I was checking is to make sure that look, this looked somewhat centered and also lined up. So you can always fold it that way. Even if it's off just a little bit, which just is off a little bit, it's not going to make a huge difference. Then you can fold over um, the piece with the tab on it. Add glue to that. We just want to be, make sure we're not getting any glue on the outside of this. So we're just going to line that up. It should line up flat. And then we're going to fold in one, one part. So I already folded it, so it's going to be easy for me to fold, fold down. I'm just going to add glue to all six of these, and we're going to insert the solid one, the one without the hexagon cut out. That will be the one that um, will glue to the other piece, so we won't see the tabs, but it makes it a little sturdier, and it makes it easier to put together. This little thing is just to go over that. It gets in my way sometimes, but I like using them, so. So make sure you have the solid piece, the one without the hole, the hexagon in it, hexagon hole. And then I'm going to put the non-textured side inside because it'll it'll do better to the non-textured inside of the tab. So we're just going to line it up. You can see it lines up to the edges here quite well. Getting it out of the way so I don't glue on it. So apply pressure all around those tabs. Um, and if you do have one that's kind of pulling away, because I know you might look and see something maybe like this one, you could always add a little bit more glue before you glue it, just to get it down. So, I mean, that does happen. The other one's pretty tight there, so... So that's the time to fix that if you have any issue with that. And then you go ahead and fold them in. Then we'll add glue to these tabs and then place this. So I added glue to this one tab. So one way you can do it is to anchor one side. So the way you can do that is just line it up. You could do it all at once too. It, that's up to you. I like to line it up and get one tab anchored like that. So on the inside, so we just have to add glue and fold it down. So when we do it, I'm just going to add glue and we'll just go around and line it up. So I'm almost done doing it and you'll notice that I'm keeping trying to get glue to the edges much, most, much, as much as I can. Um, and then going back, it's, it's like drying. So when I fold it over, I'm going to start from over here. This is why I like wet glue, is I'm going to uh, make sure that I get it as lined as possible before it sets. 
So if I get that first one off a little bit, which I did, you don't want to push those tabs in too deep because you don't have anything to um, go against it. So that's the very first one I did. I didn't do it straight. I think that was the first one. Once you get it down, so what I'll do is, if I'm not happy with the, the edge, well, I would have done it anyways. I'm just going to ink them a little bit. So I didn't get that perfect, but that's, it's enough. And then you can go like that. And then if you needed to uh, fix a couple areas, you could just take, get the glue in the edge. And you could use a piece of paper to do that. Uh, somebody else uses this technique that I learned from. So I think it's a great technique. That's Leo from uh, Dreaming Tree. Where he takes a bit, bit of, it, it's something that I didn't think about, and it was such a simple solution, but taking a little glue, and if you have a gap, just getting it in there. So that's something that I learned from him, because we kind of learn from each other when we do something. But anyways, I don't have any significant gaps, but I, I will on the next one. So once you get that set, make sure you don't have any edges kind of come up. It's going to be that that's where this is going to go. So that's going to sit in here. But we don't want to put it in quite yet. You want to glue this to here, this. So we're just going to do this. And the reason why we, so the reason why we have this solid is be, so we have something to glue this against when we put it in. So that's the whole reason why I did it that way. So now we want to line this up. So it's going to be a little wonky, but because you can't put a whole lot of pressure on it, but you're going to do your best once we get glue on it, put the pressure down, get it lined up, and then we're going to place some pressure down on these areas so to minimize the gap there. So we don't have much to work with. You can put the glue on this one or over here. I'm going to go over here because I kind of know even if the, there's too much glue in the middle, it's not going to hit anything, but I pretty much know you can just judge it. You want to get close to the edges. Of course, I can clean that off with... Keep it as wet as you can without warping the paper, obviously. Depends on your glue. To me, you kind of have to do this all at once. You could use a glue gun if you wanted. Um, it's just not as forgiving and jiggle. So this, with wet glue, you can move it around and get it set. With something like the glue gun, you kind of have to pull it up again and it could cause damage. Same thing with a just regular double-sided adhesive. It can cause issues. So we're going to go ahead and line it up. I didn't really pay attention to too much of how I was lining it up, but I'm going to get it, oops, I'm going to get it set in place where I want it. So you can go down here and I'm just feeling the edges right here. And I did push that in a little bit, so it could, we'll get that indent out. But go around, make sure that it's as close as it can be. So I'm just going around and holding it around the edges here and the sides that I'm gluing it. So I'm putting pressure with my fingers right there, pushing it down. And I'm rotating and doing the same thing to minimize the gaps between the two. There's going to be a little bit of a gap. So there it is right there. So you could take the glue, like the, this other thing we were talking about. If you have it, the edges are coming up a little bit. Put a little glue there and then hold the area. You just have to be, be careful because it will compress. 
but if you're okay with it overall it's not going to make a huge difference i just think it's fun to have a box that looks like so i have a little gap there too but it really doesn't take away too much from the overall look but you can get a little bit closer depending on how much you can see as i push down if you're wondering whether you can do it yes and you can always reach in and pop it out if it you push it down like that pops back out just as long as you didn't put your finger through it so that's the bottom uh, the bottom part of it minus this so once you feel okay with this you make sure you're done with getting the gaps out and everything else we want to put this in so this should slide gently into here So this squishes too, remember. So I'm just going to pull it out. You could put a box inside to make it a little firmer. I'm just going to put glue around here on the edge. Then I'm going to carefully put it in. Make sure there's no glue on your fingertips. I'm just dabbing it around just to get that excess glue and it's going to dry clear anyway. So now I'm just going to go like this from each side, make sure it looks straight. So I'm looking at it. So it looks like it looks okay. So now I'm going to put my finger in here and use my finger as the backdrop to just apply pressure. So I'm applying the pressure against the other side of this piece. I have short fingers, so I think most people should be able to get in other than maybe a, a child. And if that's the case, you could always use something like this. And get, as long as you can find where the middle is to help you apply pressure. So you want to let that sit and dry. So that's why we're doing it early. So I'm going to put it over here sitting like this to the side so it can dry. So now we'll go ahead and work on the lid piece. So as I stated earlier, this is similar to the bottom, the lid, the way that this is built. It has a slightly different shape to it, but you want to go ahead and score it first before you start putting it together. So the same thing, I'll just go through one of these to show you. And it's going to be the same, almost identical to the um, bottom piece. The difference might be you can st you can do the bottom one and then the top one, but I always say the angled one's easier to do first. So if I do the angled one, again, you can push in that other tab, get that lined up first. And once I kind of have it in place, I can line up this other one. And that will happen, can happen to you too. So, so you can see. And I'll do one more and then the rest I'm going to do without speaking so so you can see it and make sure that you saw it twice without so that I'm using my little damp towel here you could do that so you can push that one in a little bit more and then put glue on both but I'm going to poke it out so I can get the glue on there well I'm in the center of the screen here. Then line this up. And 
If you do like this project, I ask if you could give me a little thumbs up on the video and or subscribe to the video to our channel. I'm sorry if you haven't already done so. Just laying this up. And if you hit that little notification button to the right of subscribe, you'll be notified when we have new projects, new boxes, tutorials, cards, that kind of thing. It is highly appreciated. So I'll go ahead and finish this and then we're going to put this one in the same way that we did the other one. So I'm just going to continue doing that until I get this in and then I'll come back and we'll talk about just the last step of putting this top piece on. So as you can see, I'm almost done closing it up. So I have these last two tabs. And for this one, we had to go with one tab down because this is bigger, won't go through the hole. And then you can slide these tabs through the hole, like you saw in the video. Then we're gonna get these last two in. And the one thing I wanna mention, um, why I came back before I was done with this, um, just to clarify how I put this together. So that is the lid. And there is an optional panel. I mean, it's really, I didn't put it as an optical file, but it's in the file. There's a little panel like this. Um, it's not that one that goes on this. So this is the top. We're just going to glue it to the top like that. But if you wanted to, you want to glue, oops, that fell down there. So here's one of them. Let's see if you can see it. It's going to go in. I'm not going to focus, I guess. But anyways, um, if you wanted, there's a, here's this panel. So you could put a pattern piece just like this, or you could make it a, uh, something to put a personal message to a teacher or to a coworker or something, because this is going to be used for school uh, for kind of a fun work um, gift or something like that because this is like an office item. So you want to put that on first, but I'm, for this one, I'm not going to put it on there. So so we're just going to go ahead and add glue to this, or you could have done what I did earlier and add it to the edge of the other one. You don't want to get it on the outside though. This is a little bit easier because it's flat rather than having it kind of a thickness like the other one. Still want to get through the edges. And if you wanted to, you could, I, I do not do things with my fingers too much because um, I had a reaction to glue. So just be aware that there's chemicals in these glues sometimes that can react. and I had some sort of little rash and my dermatologist said it was um, 
it was an allergic reaction. So that's why I try to keep glue off. I haven't had it since. So um, it was just an odd thing that happened for a short period of time. So I'm just lining this up, but I like to keep you no know, uh, let other people be aware of the issues. And my mind works just the way that I talk, where I'll go half sentence and won't complete it. And then we just want to rub it around those edges. And again, that's why we had that opening. It was to allow us to glue those tabs easily. And then once you get it in place, you go ahead and rub it against the table to get, get it even closer. Not do that. So be careful with that, but you can pop it out. Try to stick at the corners a little bit when you're putting that pressure on. And then that's going to complete the box. So here we go. We have this lid to make a, a rather large pin, push pin um, gift box. It's just fun because you can put a fair amount in there. It's pretty pretty deep because this is all empty right here and obviously the, the gift card that I showed you earlier will go right in like that which is nice it'll sit in there and you still can put goodies around it or just give the gift card so I hope you like this project again if you did please give me a little thumbs up and I thank you so much for watching